Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gude. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So again, as we're the start of the new year, we come up with these new topics. And this is quite an interesting topic. And it is, what is the role of the antral follicle count as a predictor of ovarian responsiveness in women with endometriomas with a history of either having been operated or not being operated for endometriomas. So that's quite a wide subject. And why is it important? Because the endometrioma is the commonest tumor that we see in women. And the simple question is sometimes we are divided into the medical side of it and the surgical side of it. And if the average specialist does not operate and depends on other surgeons to operate, is what is the information do we give our colleagues? And what this looks at is, it looks at, is there any other way of trying to predict and be able to tell a patient that you may be able to get the reasonable number of oocytes available for a successful treatment? So what do we know? We know that on their own, endometriotic cysts do have a detrimental effect on the ovary. And we know that from multiple studies. And we also know that th there is a damage that occurs and it damage occurs due to diffusion of toxic stuff substances. And there seems to be a burnout and that burnout occurs. And what does it do? It starts and a more accelerated growth of primordial follicles. And in fact, that leads to a, an earlier demise of follicles and may lead to an earlier menopause and a, a, quite a drastic drop in ovarian reserve. So the question you would ask me is then, isn't AMH sufficient? Yes, it is to a large extent, but again, it doesn't tell us from which ovary is contributing and which is not contributing. So what we know is that one ovary may sometimes overcompensate and thus the AMH may not drop significantly. And so FSH, inhibit B and AMH have not been greatly beneficial in trying to know from, differentiate from which ovary the drop is occurring. And thus, if you do an ultrasound scan accurately, you are able to then give a much better idea of what is the current ongoing reserve. Now, if you have a look at my triangle and the triangle which I often show you, and which I jokingly call the Goody Triangle. And what it will show you is it will show you how to plan the dose of medications based on the antral follicle count and understanding what the AMH does. So there were four groups now. All right, I'll simplify this because it's quite a complex, statistically complicated paper. And what it says is group one is controls, no surgeries, no endometriomas. Group two, they are endometriomas, but there's no surgery. Group 3, they have been operated, but there's been no recurrence. And group 4 is they have been operated and there has been a recurrence. So there were two scans done, one in the early proliferative phase and second in when a day 3 scan was done and you needed the endometrium to be at least more than one centimeter. Now have a look at, so what did they do? They divided into the antral follicle and they looked at how many follicles were growing in uh, the stimulation. So if you look at non-operated gonads, if you saw without and with endometriomas, the number of follicles as well as the number of antral follicles and the follicles responded were very much similar. As soon as you go into operated ones, you start seeing a drop in the number in the antral follicle count and you see a drop in how many follicles are recruited. So if you see without endometrioma, which means that the surgery has been complete, the response was the worst, while with endometrioma, the response was slightly better. Now, what does this tell us? And this gives a hint at a very important aspect. So when you operate on ovaries, you cause peripheral damage. You know, as good as a surgeon you may be, you have to realize that if you dissect it and then if you burn on top of it, you cause more extensive damage. And so what does it show us? If you just have a look at the previous slide, it says that in operated cases where there was no recurrence, the prognosis was the worst. And what may be possible is how do you prevent a recurrence of endometrioma? 
you do a more extensive surgery. And the more extensive surgery you do, your response in IVF will tend to be lower. In fact, you'll see less antral follicles grow, go, going. And whilst you will prevent a recurrence, you will also lower the potential of getting more eggs. But why is it that those women who had a recurrence of endometrioma has had a better antral follicle count? And what it tells us is, as the process of ovulation starts, these ovaries tend to function much better. And that may be also the reason why you may be seeing follicles grow. Now, a take home message will come in and will say, well, have an AMH done. And I always will tell you, do not operate on the ovaries without a baseline AMH. Next is the antral follicle count. And I, in fact, those who come to my, my teaching, which I do in Dubai, or uh, I'll always harp upon, think about antral follicles. And antral follicles are a must. And you have to measure them. You have to measure their size. And there's a logic behind it. And that log and what we know is that women, if let's say you have a woman who has uh, a very low antral follicle count, low AMH with an endometrioma, surgery or no surgery is not going to make a huge difference. And in those cases, you tend to intervene only if there is pain. Now, if there's a high AMH and there's good antral follicle count and there's endometrioma, I think a lot of people are moving towards saying let's create uh, take eggs or embryos and at least then try and treat the endometriomas. But what does this allow us? And this will give you a much better idea of looking at the antral follicle count and, and counting them. And But I always tell you, you'll understand the ovary better. And the more you understand the ovary, the more you decide that you'll be able to measure your antral follicles, you'll be able to predict. Uh, the follicular response and also eventually you will decide which ovaries you can operate and which ovary you can't operate and which ovary are left behind. So this paper and it's a slightly older paper about three years ago and four years ago but it, it is a seminal paper it gives us a significant amount of information to think about. It gives the information to think about is I, how can we predict stimulation and it will be dependent on your antral follicles. So I hope you enjoyed this talk and it's a good start for the year uh, and I, I, I'm hoping that we'll continue this through this year and let's enjoy reading and learning more. Thank you very much.